Hello. <laughs> Hello, Mayor's Letters. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks. Yeah, I've been experimenting with this uh, combination using uh, Rolly's Equator 2 Soft Synth, which has like lots of uh, onboard samples, including uh, some recorded analog synths, but also lots of uh, uh, acoustic instruments like this uh, dual simmer, which I really like, uh, but also the the synth, this bass synth. It's the same instrument. And I'm using uh, addictive drums here. I think this combination works really well together, so this is kind of like a preview and a jam uh, about this song I've been working on. Uh, I've, I'm not sure about the structure yet because basically just everything I play with this is just, you know, I really enjoy, including this uh, faster uh, drum and bass part. So I, I haven't decided how to turn this into a song. But uh, yeah, that's my plan. And my other plan for tonight, how are you doing, by the way? Um, while waiting for my question and your answers to arrive uh, through this uh, double latency. I'm going to load my other project, which is based on, um, yeah, I hope the audio won't glitch too much when I load this new project, let's see. So this is based on the Mathrock uh, um, project uh, I used like about a month ago for, for that live, stri live stream. Uh, I just, uh, Added a couple of new riffs and uh, slightly, well, not so slightly, tweaked the uh, the sounds. Mostly the bass guitar. I just added like a massive fuzz pedal, virtual fuzz pedal, so it will sound a bit more sick, I guess. Uh, I just need to wait until it loads. Just a few more seconds. Uh, yep, yeah, so I'm I'm just going to improvise with those uh, riffs and let's see what comes out of it. Yep. Yeah, this is what I <laughs> what I mentioned. Uh, just one more tiny tweak. Right, let's see this.
forgot to mention that, as usual, everything is uh, completely live and improvised. So uh, I'm just figuring out what to play in the moment. Uh, yep, carry on enjoying this. this microphone in my face but uh, I'll be back feel free to talk to me
sorry, I, I, I got a bit lost. I, I couldn't follow myself <laughs> or my brain couldn't follow my, my hands. Uh, but uh, hey, Juan, uh, thank you so much for being here and your kind words. Uh, yeah, I carry on with this. There were a couple of good moments, I think. I really enjoyed like like this part, this kind of... But I have these uh, non-sustained parts, like uh, this is also programmed in uh, Nularsec, this Max for Live device I'm using to uh, play the melodic parts while I'm also drumming. And there's this mode, like there's a sustain mode where I just hit a pad and it will sustain a note in indefinitely. And there's this other mode which, which uh, only plays a note as long as I touch or as, as long as I keep touching the pad. And this kind of like when there's a sustain note, this will cut it off. And uh, this... Uh, results in some quite nice rhythmic variations, I think. Anyway, I hope you, you're enjoying this. Hey, Cloud9, <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> hey, John, uh, singing, no. Probably not. Probably not a good idea. Although, maybe maybe with some heavy heavy effects. Like, uh, is anyone? Uh, no, maybe I shouldn't say that name because some someone could be offended. Uh, maybe not because I read this in an interview. There's this uh, band, uh, uh, OSI, Office of Strategic Influence, uh, where the singer of uh, uh, Chroma Key. Ah, oh, I can't remember his name. Anyway, so he's not this kind of like uh, singer with an amazing range, uh, amazing vocal qualities, but uh, with the effects he's using, uh, like I, I think think what what he does as a singer really fits the music. So maybe I could do something like that using some megaphone effects and uh, distortion, lots of reverb and delay. But yeah, I I didn't plan that for today. Sorry, just uh, drum, bass, and guitar, and. Sometimes another guitar. That's a good idea. I just need to practice so that I can do this with my hands and that with my <laughs> mouth, I guess. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Uh, good idea. Also, some someone suggested that I should obviously use my, my feet as well. So I've got this uh, um, Keith Macmillan uh, keyboard or f footboard, something like that. Like it's a one octave keyboard for your feet. So I could actually use that to play uh, something, uh, which I used to do in a band where I played the bass and I played some synths with my feet. But uh, I try to keep this setup. I wouldn't say it's simple uh, because it's it's pretty complicated, at least on the software side. But I don't want to complicate it even more with extra uh, hardware. But I could be convinced. Try. I'm also, uh, I'd be very happy to collaborate uh, with some singers or rappers uh, doing this kind of music. So if you know anyone or if yourself wants to, you yourself want to collaborate with me and send some vocals, I'm, you know, uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to start, work, start working on some songs.
uh, it would be really tricky for me to learn any of this like as a fixed arrangement i i i'm just playing some random stuff so i've i've no idea how i could replicate these exact riffs uh hey midi drummer thanks for uh dropping in i'm really happy to see you uh i've been watching your uh youtube videos uh for everyone else uh midi drummer he's like a midi drummer basically <laughs> i guess like he's uh, playing drums on not a pad controller which is also midi by the way but on a midi keyboard mostly covers i guess uh anyway yeah i i don't know anything about that myself like playing drums on a keyboard but i really respect uh, all those finger drummers who master that form of expression it's really exciting i think <laughs> uh it's funny how you go from blunt force metal to calming describing the process <laughs> contrast i didn't vocalizing such unified instrumentation enough in the flattery thank you so much <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I figured uh, that uh, if the music is so chaotic, why not, uh, you know, uh, stop it every now and then randomly to make it even more chaotic and hopefully exciting. Also, I, I don't have uh, too many riffs, like only these eight, eight riffs uh, programmed for today. So I need to uh, spend some time between the different parts, I guess. Anyway, a little bit more crazy stuff.
guess accidentally I programmed some uh, melodies which are which sound like a kind of a rock song, like not this sick math metal something uh, like this, but this. Just another layer of contrast for you guys, I guess. <laughs> ah, hey Tom, hey Tom, so good to see you. <laughs> How are you doing? I dedicate this song to you, I guess. <laughs> uh, once it's be it becomes a song. Like, uh, thanks, Tom. Uh, about back to this singer conversation. Like, if any of you knows someone who could do the same as what I'm doing, this kind of live, live improvisation, but uh, with wh uh, while singing or shouting or rapping to this music, I think that would be an epic combination. So, if any any of you knew someone who who could pull 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 it off, then please let me know. <laughs> Thank you. 
I just love this. I, I love this song idea or something. I ho hope you too, because uh, I'd like to keep playing it for a little bit more. Uh, animal sounds. Yeah, that that would be easy actually. Um, uh, well, not not with real animals, but uh, <laughs> some sound samples. Maybe I could assign some, you know, horse, some chicken sounds here as well. <laughs> um, or I could go down the Pink Floyd route, uh, route, route. Um, what they did in the uh, live at Pompeii video, where in one of the songs uh, a dog was singing beautifully. Recommended watch. Anyway, I just continue playing this. <laughs> because I don't have a dog will be the title of this song Will it be the future of streaming, like live karaoke, hopefully? Uh, I, I'm not sure <laughs> it would be... Uh, I, I, I'm not sure it's even possible to, to, to pull it off right now, although lots of people are working on this. I, I haven't seen a working version, but uh, please, please sing with your mic and uh, send me the vocals later and I will just put it together into a song. Are you in?
th there is a bug somewhere either in in my software or in this launch pad this this is the pad which i use to turn on the delay on the guitar no delay i mean echo not latency yes delay no and this happened like for the second time today that i was playing something and i'm pretty sure yeah pretty sure that i didn't touch this and uh, just some somewhere here and the delay turned all on no idea what's going on anyway uh, maybe this is just a form of uh, i don't know human machine interaction ai powered jam you know, super exciting stuff. <laughs> How I react when random things happen. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I will try to obtain uh, the required uh, samples for uh, for the next session. Maybe some uh, uh, some animal vocal powered math rock and or gent metal or or something else. Um, yeah, although, um, yeah, a bit granular synthesis, like, uh, uh, actually, yeah, I, I just got this, uh, um, got a new toy, the Polyan Tracker, this kind of standalone groove box, uh, which you can use to create all kinds of really, really cool, uh, electronic music. And it has a, a very, very basic granular, um, granular engine. Uh, which can be used to turn any sample into any anything else. Like I, I could create a baseline from some recorded uh, duck sounds. Um, so yeah, that might be something I, I present next time. <laughs> uh, yeah, a ghost could be another explanation of what's happening here. The most likely one. Where was I? Who would have thought that uh, the Skynet would uh, originate from the launch platform where maybe, <laughs> or, ah, oh, it, it might be Nullarsec, <laughs> the max for life device I created. Maybe that's, that's Skynet. Scary stuff. <laughs>
th this wasn't a ghost, this was me. Sorry. up about uh, my uh, finger drumming development I guess like uh, recently I started using this save zone here like these um, like this this yellow 4x4 is my playing surface and these eight orange pads change the sequence uh, of notes uh, my drums also trigger <laughs> And uh, so I added this extra safety zone here uh, because I, I kept accidentally switching <laughs> melodies when I didn't intend to. And I think it's working. Like I, I still hit these pads every now and then, mostly with my thumb, I think. Uh, but it's much, uh, much less frequent. Uh, I'm not sure if you noticed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm really happy, happy about this. Back to work.
I guess. Uh, it's a Gibraltar uh, GEMS or GEMS, G E M S. Uh, I think it's uh, called Electric Mounting Station or something. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. Plus uh, some K brakes uh, anchors so that it's it doesn't move too much. At least it doesn't bounce away this way.
so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. to King Crimson this this sound in particular yeah the, these two this, this uh, not that it's like super unique or anything just reminds me of uh, at least one King Crimson King, King Crimson song just not not sure which one yet but I figure it out uh, we love that band sure <laughs> how long the skin of my fingers will last so i think I, i'll play for like five ten more minutes or so and then i will call it the day and start preparing for the next one um yeah i hope you enjoyed this so far and uh yep still feel free to ask questions or uh yeah that's what i wanted to say <laughs>
about? Uh, I'm actually not familiar. I mean, I, I know about the band, but I've never listened. So if it's like this, uh, it could be my cup of tea. I'll, I'll give them a go. And <laughs> about the gloves, yeah. Um, I'm not convinced they would help if they worked. Uh, because it's not... Actually, I've I've seen bass players, at least one bass player like 20 years ago, who who put like a... I guess it must have been a very thin, transparent glove, and he was like fretting like that, which I guess is really good for for the strings because you don't sweat uh, on on those strings. But I I can't really imagine how you'd be able to play like that on this. I guess that would work, but that wouldn't help with all the the force, <laughs> the impact. Uh, you know, uh, the force might might. The skin of my fingers have to suffer from all these lots of impacts. Uh, um, it's a good idea. Not sure if it will work, but I might give it a try. Thanks. Yeah, I, I might as well put like the launchpad itself into a protective case, I guess. <laughs> hope hope I can still still uh, hit uh, the right pads. <laughs> yeah, just not not sure which which song it is. Uh, I think it must be uh, from the Power to Believe album. Um, yeah, I, I look into this. <laughs> Trash. Yeah, that's. I'm. I'm. I'm clearly. I, clearly, I, I. haven't done my homework because I. I don't think I've heard that combination before. Um, yeah, I give them a go just to check that. Uh, uh, that bass sound. I'm. I'm obviously a huge fan of distorted bass. Um, about the Launchpad Mini, um, I don't think it is. At least not for this kind of finger drumming. I don't think it's suitable for that. Uh, uh, the the Launchpad and the Launchpad Mini are not uh, velocity sensitive they have these little they have little buttons on them basically if you can see them like like this so this moves uh, you can physically press these these are buttons and all the pads on the launchpad mini are like or similar to this uh, so it's either on or off you can't do like quiet and loud stuff these these don't actually move these are or not not like these and these are velocity sensitive, so you'll need a Launchpad Pro or a Launchpad X. Cool, thanks. I, I checked them out. Where was I?
and that was one of those accidental hits, uh, which is a great opportunity for me to answer this uh, comment. So about the machine or machine, if you're not German. Well, I'm not German, so it should be machine for me, I guess. Uh, yeah, I have one of those uh, as well. And uh, obviously, because it's a 4x4 pad controller, it's a bit more uh, limiting. Uh, but still, like I'm still sticking with a 4x4 key playing surface, so it's perfectly suitable for that. I actually have a, a one, no, actually two two videos where I uh, where I use it because it has pretty pretty good pads in my opinion. And I think in MIDI mode it has like lots of extra buttons, so you could still assign those extra buttons to uh, parameters in Ableton, or um, you can actually like uh, there's this if you're if you're using Ableton <laughs> or on Linux. <laughs> If you're using Ableton, you can uh, uh, use this stuff I created, Nullarsec, this Max Foley device, so it's available for free. Uh, I can give you a link, or you can find it under all of my YouTube videos, I guess. Uh, anyway, so you you could uh, use that with the uh, Machina as well. Although I've run into triggering issues with that uh, that unit, like uh, I think. Uh, it was uh, not double triggering, but like when I was hitting these two pads, or or these two pads uh, on the machine, uh, quite hard. Then I think one one of the pads in between also got triggered, which is tolerable in some uh, scenarios. But uh, like if these here got like uh, if some of my melody switching pads uh, accidentally receive, oh actually it's not not just about that. Like uh, if I play, like right now I'm just improvising with these melodies, but sometimes in, in some of my songs I actually like s try to stick to a fixed uh, pre-written sequence, which I still which I still trigger in real time. And if, if this kind of double triggering or any kind of triggering issues uh, happen, that means that it will, th this whole, whole setup will be useless because regardless of... Uh, what what you play some additional notes might be uh triggered so anyway that's that's one of the reasons i'm i'm not not using uh, my machine i still have it my machine micro uh, or micro i just don't uh, use it uh, also also because i realized that uh, when i spent more time practicing on those bigger pads which uh, um actually like uh it's a little bit uh it takes a little bit of getting used to, but not too much. Like I can fairly easily adapt to the larger pads. It's just uh, when I like uh, when I hit the kick, the kick and the the crash at the same time. These I need to quite stretch my my fingers quite a bit, so that's not super comfortable um, for me. But what I realized is that uh, after I spent some time on the machine, coming back to the launch pad and playing on these tiny pads, I was absolutely rubbish. So it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's really not useful for me to to spend a lot of a lot of time on that because then I need to get back into this this mindset and you know, kind of relearn these tiny pads. Uh, but other than that, I I think it's a uh, it's still a great uh, pad controller. Uh, Uh, this is an Ableton plugin. Uh, you mean Linux? <laughs> uh, yeah, this this thing thing I made. It's a Max for Life plugin. Um, one MIDI ring on eBay choreographer life. Well, what is that about? Uh, do I play acoustic drums? I like really badly, I guess. Like uh, I always wanted to play. Uh, the drums, well, always until I, I figured out that I, I can just do this. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I used to, uh, in rehearsal breaks when I was playing the guitar or, or the bass in a band, uh, when the rest of the band had, uh, went on a cigarette break or something like that, I, I usually like, you know, got the, uh, re reached for for the sticks immediately and started playing some random stuff. So I can play some simple things, but uh, not not very well and not nearly as well as, as here. 
and also since since I figured out how to play drums on 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 a pad controller, I'm, I also completely lost interest. So much so that when I went uh, on a rehearsal, we had a rehearsal with some friends. Uh, it must have been I don't know two years ago, and then I thought like, all right, it, it's uh, it's a break. So wh why why did I take the opportunity to play some drums? And it was so weird, like I got so used to this launch pad and that everything is just here and I can express myself quite uh, well here that uh, I found it really inconvenient. So I think that might, might have been the last time <laughs> for me to sit at a real drum kit. <laughs> uh, that middle ring is dope. The middle ring, yo, what a parameter and pitch. Um, yeah, I have, uh, have these Genki uh Genki wave midi rings uh which I which I got like uh for the Christmas sale and they they're absolutely amazing like uh, I made a video with that but it's not about finger drumming or act actually there's there there's no rhythmic element in that video at all but they're really good for everything else and I haven't figured out how to or if I should at all integrate uh, that ring into my finger drumming work workflow. Uh, there's 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 this guy. Can't remember his name. Uh, um, another finger drummer, and he's he's also using one of these rings to like modulate some parameters while he's playing. But I don't know when when I, when I do something like. Like like when do you have time to? do something like this or this or something so when 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 you're doing finger drumming i think all all you have time for is figure out which pads you hit and how hard you hit them and how hard you hit them means like velocity assigning the midi velocity to some synth parameters that's i think there's a huge potential in that but like controlling some extra parameters with this movement i can only pull that off if i only play with one hand but then it will become um, ACDC quite, quite soon, I think. So I, I prefer not to combine these things. What would I recommend to learn finger drumming methodically? Um, yeah, there are a number of courses uh, which seem to be pretty good, like uh, Express Pads or. Uh, the quest for groove. Uh, I haven't done these, uh, but uh, they've been around for quite some time, and uh, some of the fundamental idea ideas behind their techniques are quite similar to what I've been doing. For me, the key thing was to figure out this kind of having this mirrored layout, like two kicks, two snares. It doesn't need to be exactly this, but the concept of having a mirrored layout uh, so that both hands have access to uh, key elements that's very important and it's important because then you can do this kind of consistent right left movement so rather than doing this like uh, trying to be a, a drum kit or kit uh, or stick drummer like right hand hi hat left hand everything else this is how most people approach finger drumming in my, uh, as far as I can Tell, and I think this like immediately you limit yourself to like 50% of the uh, speeds you can uh, you can reach via doing this kind of regardless of what you play at least when you start uh, well except for some more complicated stuff you just stick with this right left right left movement and use whichever hand falls to the drum hits or drum part you want to play, if you know what I mean. It's actually quite simple, but a bit tricky to explain. So like... For this, I don't need to use my other hand, but if I add an, an extra kick, at a, then it depends, like... I think it's like upbeat and downbeat. Like if it's the upbeat, then it's your leading for me, it's my right hand. Like, I don't actually do this movement all the time, but 
uh, it's as if I, I was doing it like. So th this is my my key advice. Like try 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 this because it will result in like much faster speeds. Like uh, theoretically, like if you're really fast with this kind of this technique, then you can be twice as fast using the alternate uh, hand technique. And uh, what else was I gonna say? Uh, yeah, and the other thing is, I think it becomes like very, like much more uh, solids, your rhythm, like it's just, it's similar to this kind of campfire guitar playing where you do this constant hand movement, down, up, down, up. And if you just, you know, whenever you, s even if you're not strum strumming all the time, you, you do this, at least guitarists do. Uh, and this gives you this kind of constant rhythm. I think this is very similar, having this kind of constant right left thing gives you this very, very solid groove. It might be a little bit more tricky to get into it, but I think it's definitely worth it. For At least for me it was. And I think this is what these uh, uh, other two finger drumming courses I mentioned will tell you, I think. Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, yeah, like this. Yeah, I, I, I prefer using both hands for this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, exactly, yeah, that, that's what I saw. I didn't do the Quest for Groove uh, course, but uh, he seemed to be doing the same thing. So I, I think this is just like co common sense. I, I wouldn't say it's applicable to all scenarios, and specifically the Quest for Groove, I think uh, he made a video where he explained the limitations of, uh, of this mirror layout uh mostly i think when it when it comes to non four fourth um like uh, triplets and that kind of stuff then it can become a bit weird because uh the rolls of your hands uh will change periodically uh still i i think until you run into these issues i think it's definitely worth exploring uh i just quickly post uh link to Nullar sex so that you can try it. Uh, and then I will play just a tiny bit more before my skin completely dies. <laughs> okay, so it's on maxforlive.com. There's a nice manual and everything. And I recently updated it. Let's see if I can actually... Yeah, that's the link to this device I'm using to uh, to play multiple instruments at the same time. <laughs> like this. <laughs> I like to do my own, not a full course, but like a couple of tutorial videos where I explain what I did and some more finger drumming, uh, basic technique stuff, uh, you know, more concise and easy to under understand uh, in a well-produced fashion. It's just like I, I can't, I find it really difficult to get into the mindset of creating like that kind of video we, because I, I've never, never done it. I, I just feel much more comfortable uh, actually playing playing music then creating tutorial videos but it will come i i'm 100 percent sure that i'm going to do those tutorials eventually i've been holding off for some time it's coming <laughs> but don't wait for me just practice <laughs> uh yeah because like you can follow all these courses but 
like for me really i, I just found this idea by w watching some random random youtube videos and i i didn't even have to follow any any courses i just kept experimenting with what's uh, what's possible and what helped is that i i i knew what i wanted to play like i wanted to play mashuga <laughs> so i kind of like used that to uh, as a compass to optimize my technique you're welcome all right just a bit more
much. watch this later to figure out if I actually hit it, but I'm pretty sure it didn't hit this. signatures astound me thank you so much uh the the funny thing is or i don't know if it's funny <laughs> actually like i don't don't think about time signatures and i don't really know what i'm playing like uh i don't have time to count in my head or anything i just uh i just play play some stuff 
<laughs> and uh, it would be pretty tricky to pull this off in a with a with a band, you know, with a guitarist and bass player, uh, like as a drummer, uh, you know, just improvising random time signatures and expecting everyone to, you know, play along immediately. <laughs> so that's why what I think the real power of Nularsec, this device I built so that I can play all these instruments at the same time, live improvised, and uh, they're always in perfect sync, which is suitable for some genres like math rock and uh, uh, metal, gent, these kind of things. And it's just so much fun that I can just, uh, you know, let, let's, let it go and just let you know, let all these weird time signatures, whatever, were f flow out of my... I guess they are coming from my brain, but not consciously, really. So I, I, I just, you know, my fingers are just playing some random stuff here. And, uh, yeah, this, you know, I, I feel like the last five years of practicing was <laughs> was all, all worth it. Um, uh, <laughs> Yeah, a fast Wi-Fi or wired connection recommended for <laughs> finger drumming. Uh, did I study music? I I did uh, a little bit. Like uh, my first instrument was the piano when I was like uh, seven, six or seven years old, I think. And uh, I played the piano for I don't know, maybe three years. So I studied a little bit of music theory. And then, then piano wasn't that you know wasn't really that uh, I, I didn't just I, that wasn't my favorite instrument I, instrument I guess I, I didn't fall in love with it. And uh, then I did uh, my next instrument was the guitar when I was like 15 years old, and I did uh, study some classical guitar for like two years or so, and. Uh, I also studied like one year of music theory just like as a hobby, but uh, yeah, I, I I guess I always found it more fun to to play music than to learn about it. I'm 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 sure it would be like incredibly incredibly useful to be aware of all those scales and uh, and different modes and uh, chords and all of that. I just I don't think I I've never had the patience to get into it i i didn't even know like like uh on the guitar like i had to like slowly figure out like which which fret is which note on which string like i didn't memorize all, all that stuff and here you know like building these melodies uh there's no <laughs> theoretical foundation behind those i just you know play whatever my ears enjoy uh, yeah, anyway, that's all for today. I really need to take some rest, at least my hands. Uh, but thank you so much for being here. I think it was, well, I really enjoyed this. I hope you did too. And uh, please join next time. I do this like every Tuesday at the same time. Also every Monday, if this is not the time zone for you. Although then you, I guess you wouldn't be here, except maybe for the YouTube recording. Anyway, so I also do it at... Uh, uh monday morning is it uh i think it's 8 8 a.m gmt if that's more suitable to you um yeah thank you so much uh for being here and uh